Okay, everybody, I'm back. Did you miss me? So I'm in Kipcore right now, and I'm going to turn my camera around because you have to meet our student worker extraordinaire, Lindsay Finansteel. Hello. And Lindsay, um, tell us a little about yourself. Tell us, uh, you know, you've, you've been working for Kipcore. It's been, has it been a year? It has. This is my, going on my second year. She's been here with us for two years. All right. Almost two years. And Lindsay, tell us um, where you're from, what your major is, all about yourself. Okay. So... As she introduced, I'm Lindsay Fonnensteel. I'm a sophomore here at Bethel College. I uh, declared my major as social work. So, All right. Um, I plan to stick around here, hopefully. Um, I'm from Hayes, Kansas, so not too far away. Uh, how I got into Cape Core was I took a class, a restorative justice class. Wow. You must have had an amazing instructor. I did. <laughs> my favorite one so far. <laughs> So that kind of got me interested in the... Uh, that was me. That was me. <laughs> the, uh, the organization, and then I applied to be a student assistant here, so I just kind of wormed my way in here. And so, yeah, I love working here at Kipcore. Kipcore goes above and beyond for not only, like, their students, their staff, but just the whole community in general. You know, and we did not even pay you to say that. Well, we are paying you, <laughs> but... You know, you, you're you saying that on your own. Yes, I love uh, it here. Uh, well, we love having you, Lindsay, and you've been such a great addition <laughs> to our staff. And, you know, one day, Lindsay, um, you're going to need to get hired by somebody else. And we can say we knew you when, <laughs> and we will be a great reference for you. Um, but Lindsay is a hard worker, and she was an excellent student in my class. And I'm not just saying that. Well, thank you. So anyway, um, I thank you so much for sharing that. And we are going to move on. Bye. Uh, thanks, Lindsay. Anytime. So we're going to move down the hall here. Oh, my goodness. Dan is hard at work. Hard at work. My fingers are burning. Oh, my gosh. Dan is the fastest <laughs> typist ever. So um, sometimes I listen to the clicking of his keys, and I'm just jealous because I never could type that fast. I have fast. an 80% error rate, though. Oh, I, okay. Well, sorry to hear that. Well, Dan Wasink. Dan is our director of the Community Mediation Center here at KIPCOR. He is the nerve center for all that happens with our dispute resolution, resolution triage program that works with divorcing and separating parents. And so Dan, before we get into the minutia of the work that you do, we have to talk about something that's painful to me. And um, it's just really been the bane of my existence since I've started working here um, six, you know, about three years ago. But when I came here on my first day, I saw this very ugly picture right here of the Packers um, picture you have here. And it just really, it's just really, every time I walk past your door, it's just really hard to not want to throw darts at it or something. And, you know, the sad part for Dan and I is that Dan is a Packer fan. And, well, today... I don't know if you can see this, but... Oh, I didn't um, see that. I might not have come to work. <clears throat> I'm that. wearing my Minnesota Vikings uh, sweatshirt. Because um, uh, if I'm not... Uh, if, I, if I'm not wearing my Kip Core shirt, I'm, I'm sporting some Vikings gear. Mm -hmm. And so, sadly, Dan and I have a really hard time, um, especially this time of year in football season, because we, you know... Um, we have to have these very difficult conversations like the one we had the other day when the Vikings trounced the Packers. So that was, that was pretty sweet. After but, we beat you. <clears throat> yeah, whatever. That was practice. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, so otherwise, Dan and I are pretty much in alignment, though, in terms of the work. So that's where we kind of, that's where we find, you know, when we talk about conflict resolution, 
and we talk about people on opposing sides. We talk about finding the common ground. The common ground is our work. And so Dan and I are very much in alignment about conflict resolution and, and the things that we, you know, have to agree to disagree about, like who's better, the Vikings or the Packers, you know, we just kind of just don't talk about it. Is that up for debate? Oh my gosh, <laughs> whatever. But anyway, um, so Dan, um, why don't we, you know, why don't you tell me a little about the work? I mean, Dan's got a lot of certifications on his walls because he's been here for quite a while. How long have you been here, Dan? I have been here about a little more than six and a half years now. Wow. I came down from the source of the Packers in Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was a bit of an adjustment, but I think I've made it pretty well. I do miss the snow, but um, I can live with that for now. Yeah, you and me both. So tell us a little about, okay, so you came here six, six and a half years ago. Basically, at that time, this program that we talked about was just getting started, right? You kind of launched it. Um, and mm -hmm. and built it to what well, it is. Well, not me personally. It was in the works when I got here. Um, some of my uh, colleagues, like Gary and Kristen, mm -hmm. and some of the local judges had already been working hard for a couple of years to create our triage program. Mm -hmm. um, and then I came in toward the tail end of development, and uh, then I was given responsibility for uh, operating it and overseeing the program. Cool. And... So now, now that you've gotten this, you know, time to have developed the program, what would you say some of the um, uh, the positives, the the features that um, I've heard, and and we've talked about this, but this program has gotten quite a bit of notoriety because mm -hmm. of the way it's done and and the uniqueness of it. And I wonder if you could speak to that. Yeah, we are the only place in Kansas that does things this way. Uh, we uh, saw the model and work in Connecticut, mm -hmm. and we talked to folks in Connecticut, and they helped us through the design process. Um, but yeah, we're still the only place in Kansas who does things this way, where we try to assess divorcing, separating parents and their family, figure out what's going on, and then we select uh, a dispute resolution service to provide to them based on their unique circumstances. Um, we used to just send everyone to mediation. Well, mediation's great. I'm a mediator. I love it, but it's not appropriate for all families. So now we have other options, and we have about 17 providers in the community who take cases from us and provide those services. So I think the beauty of it is you get the people, you match them up with the right service, mm -hmm. and you keep them out of the courtroom nobody wants to solve right. custody cases in a courtroom not even the judges mm -hmm. so um, we try and get it out of the courtroom make it less contentious make it more of a safe environment um, to help people work through their uh, conflict yeah i mean and i know that um there have been other places that have looked at our model yes and um nationally mm -hmm. um you've been this program has been recognized um and you may want to speak to that as well. Yeah, my colleague Kirsten Zerger and I, uh, back in, I guess that was 20. 2017 or 18, mm -hmm. um, we uh, were on a, a panel where we presented information about this program to people from around the country and actually around the world. Mm. It's part of the uh, AFCC is the organization. It's an international organization. And they invited us to come and present about the program uh, in Milwaukee, back in my old stomping grounds mm -hmm. in Wisconsin, uh, and we put out a, a workshop and, and uh, basically told people about the program and how it's been working. So, yeah, we've gotten some recognition. Other jurisdictions in Kansas and other states have contacted us um, about our model. Very good. Well, Dan, um, do you want to come walk with me? Let's let's talk about KIPCOR. And um, there's there probably some other details to... Um, your work that are important and it's not just uh, you do run this program but there are other things you do in terms of um, mediation work and um, there are other types of cases that you um, tend to work and i wish you could speak to that sure we'll take any anytime people or groups are in conflict uh, a lot of times they just call us 
and see uh, what we have to offer. So mm -hmm. we, and we've done mediation. I've done mediation with my colleagues on, for Bethel students, Bethel organizations, um, local college students uh, outside of Bethel College. Um, I've worked with families who are having issues within their family. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, um, uh, hospitals, uh, dentist offices, mm -hmm. um, people who have conflict uh, from any background. I've dealt with neighbors, you know, mm -hmm. the classic barking dog problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we'll take any case, small or large, uh, two people, 20 people, and we'll just help people work through their conflict and come up with um, sustainable uh, solutions to their conflict. Very good. Um, so let's let's kind of walk down this hall. I know we looked at some of these posters earlier. Well, let me let me. This one is one that we do every year. That um, this is just one of the graduation pledge um, posters. So we get students to sign it. Mm -hmm. um, they're pledging to um, basically be peacemakers in the ways that they go forward. And every year we have graduates sign this. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll let you speak to these. Well, this is, um, as you know, I mean, this is part of our lecture series. Mm -hmm. So Sarah's part of that mm -hmm. tonight. This was uh, Patricia Palaka, who is a children's author and illustrator. Many, I'm sure many of our listeners have heard of Patricia. And she came actually way back in 2004 um, to uh, speak uh, as part of our lecture series. Mm -hmm. so, uh, obviously, I wasn't here then, but um, I've heard great things about her, and we even have some of her books in the office. Yes, Patricia Polacco is a very popular children's writer. Um, and then there's John McCutcheon, and I think John McCutcheon pre precedes both of us, yes. but we know that he is a good friend of KIPCOR, has been uh, a, a part of their... Um, uh, lecture series for this this was one of more than probably two or three engagements that he's had with Kip Core. Right. Um, but anyway, so here's a poster that he signed. Did you show him the Leonard Pitts yet? No! Oh my goodness, let's go back and look at Leonard Pitts because <laughs> we talk about Leonard Pitts. Let's go back and look at Leonard Pitts. I'm going to turn the light on because uh, all right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, hopefully they can see that. Yes, I think it's showing up quite nicely. Okay. Um, so Leonard Pitts was here. And this was, I actually missed this peace, peace lecture by a month. I think right. I got here a month after he um, presented as our peace lecture lecturer. Yeah, I remember this one well. I helped organize uh, with a, a group of a planning group. We organized Leonard Pitts's uh, appearance. Um, he w he was great. He was very easy to work with. I enjoyed uh, spending time with him, and uh, he gave a great speech. We packed Mem, Mem Hall. I think it was one of the largest crowds ever at mm -hmm. Memorial Hall. Um, we almost filled the place, uh, and he gave a great speech. And it was right after the incident in Charlottesville. Oh wow. Um, um, and, uh, you know, President Trump's words after that, and that's why Joe Biden got in the campaign. Uh, and Leonard Pitts came shortly after that to give a speech about what now America in the age of Trump. Um, and again, it was a very powerful speech. And, uh, glad I was uh, part of it. So, you know, interestingly, I was just having this conversation with a colleague a couple of days ago, but um, I was reflecting on... Uh, uh, the fact that uh, Leonard Pitts spoke on the topic. And um, now we are at a crossroads because in probably in the less than 24 hours, we will probably know who our next president is. So. And Sarah Smarsh tonight is gonna speak at a critical time um, where people will probably be biting their nails on pins and needles, trying to uh, figure out what the election results will be. What is interesting to me is I wonder, and I thought about this, and you know I'm doing a shout out to you, Leonard, wherever you are, but if if you are watching this and you have a, you want to give me your two cents, I was thinking about reaching out to Leonard Pitts once again to get his opinions on this this age we're in right now, because we may be coming into a different era for all we know, 
in the next 24 hours, but we'll see. But regardless, no matter who is our leader, we will have to figure out how this country gets put back together. And I believe Leonard Pitts might be the person, um, being that many people around here really appreciated what he had to share then, right. might appreciate want, wanting to hear from him again oh, sure. in a virtual platform kind of mm -hmm. similar to what we're doing now. So regardless, um, uh, you know, it would be great to um, kind of figure those things out. And if you're watching this and you want to give me your two cents in your post, feel free to comment. All right, so. We have time. We can look at the mediation room. Oh, gosh, yes, let's go look up at the mediation room because that is another nerve center of um, Kip Corp. So I'm going to wait for Dan to turn the lights on so you can see the... <sighs> All right, so going up the stairs, these are the original stairs of this house. And you can hear the wood creaking as I walk up. Okay, so I'm walking right into the mediation room. So here's another place where a lot goes down. Yeah, I've spent many hours in this room uh, working with parents, working with uh, students, working with lots of different people, and um, not just me, all of our um, colleagues here at KIPCOR. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, we recently had a mediation. We, uh, one of the unique things about this room is it, it's not just any room we said, oh, let's make this the mediation room. We designed this for mediation. So you can see there's tack board. Mm -hmm. where you can put a, we do a lot of flip chart. Mm -hmm. work, so we can hang the flip charts or use tacks to put them up. Uh, that was by design. Mm -hmm. um, we have two doors with windows. That was by design. So there's a door here, and then there's another door right, right here that we walked in. And that's not just by accident. That's because sometimes things can get heated in mediation, <laughs> and we, need, we want our colleagues to be able to check in, make sure we're okay and safe. Mm -hmm. And if people need to make a quick exit, yep. um, they can make a quick exit. So uh, everything was designed that way, and um, it's, a, it's a great room for mediation. We Look at the, have our approval from the state. You yep. see, we, we don't yeah. just, we are approved by the Supreme Court. Yeah, we don't just do this because we like it, but we are, we do have uh, certifications that allow us, that permit us to do this work. So, yeah, thank you, Dan, for the sure. tour of the mediation room. And I'm going to show everybody one other space. Now, granted, We've just done a little bit of touring, but there's a lot of other landscape around here. But before I do that, there's a couple of other visitors that we've acquired. <laughs> and I just wanted to, I just wanted to uh, take a moment. Are you okay, Donna, if I introduce you to the world of Facebook? Sure. So this is Donna Becker. She is a volunteer extraordinaire who has done everything from help with um, our film series. She will come and she's often greeting our guests. Um, I got that t-shirt, by the way. love one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, and she also has, like today, we needed someone to answer the phones because... We um, are getting a lot of calls because of today, and people like you might be calling in. And so Donna has agreed to come in and answer the phones, and we're grateful to you for that. And she is a person who is very active in our Bethel community, period. So anyway, <laughs> thank you for being here, Donna. And so uh, the next person that is here is... Judge <laughs> is Judge Richard Walker. So we just, Dan and I just had some conversations about the uh, dispute resolution triage program. And I was wondering if you would take a walk with us and we could chat it. up some of the origins. Because Dan mentioned how when he got here, he had already walked into a program that was fully created and you were one of the people that helped to create and build this program. And so do you mind, can we walk into the training room and chat you up? So we'll just go in and sit down.
And you can just. <laughs> so, just briefly, if you just want to share kind of what the origins of the program are from your perspective, like where did you enter into this, uh, in, uh, this agreement that this was something that should, should be built um, and especially executed through KIPP Corp? Well, we're here in the, what's called the Ninth Judicial District, which mm -hmm. is a two-county judicial district which has had a long-term commitment to alternative dispute resolution, in particular uh, domestic relations cases where um, parents either are in conflict or there's the potential for conflict. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for years we kind of had a scattershot approach to that. We required mediation, but it wasn't really done in an organized kind of uh, fashion. Um, and so it was about eight or nine years ago, we sat down and decided that um, it was important to have the program, it was important to organize it in a way where we could serve all kinds of people, whether uh -huh. they had the financial resources or not. So we committed to working with KIPCOR to design a program where all parents of children who were initiating the divorce process would go through what we call a triage program, where there is uh, some basic skill training up the front, mm -hmm. but then at an early stage, we can identify those people who are likely to uh, have ongoing conflict, mm -hmm. not be able to set aside the issues or not be able to work out responsible parenting uh, behaviors on their own. And so uh, we uh, wanted to identify those people at an early stage and determine what the best way to help them get along with each other and not fight with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, we previously did that internally, some of those things internally in the court system, identifying that, do child custody investigations, do mediation, but uh, the uh, powers that be uh, who govern the judiciary in Kansas said, well, you know, we really shouldn't be doing that ourselves, mm -hmm. which meant we had to come up with other ways of uh, doing that, and so we, here uh, are fortunate to have close access to KIPCOR, who specializes in those kinds of things. And so the district entered into some contractual arrangements with uh, uh, KIPCOR to uh, take over uh, the uh, uh, program where we identify early on parents who are in conflict and figure out the best way to deal with that. Is it simply a matter they just need to sit down and work out the problems on their own through mediation? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be, uh, is, it, is it going to require more in-depth uh, evaluation and recommendations to the court? Because judges uh, who are involved with domestic relations cases have a great deal of discretion uh, as mm -hmm. to how, where the, the, the children are gonna live, what circumstances they're going to be subject to, what kinds of parental visitation should occur. Uh, and if parents aren't able to agree on those kinds of things, if they're in conflict concerning those things, right. we know that that translates over to the children. Mm -hmm. So we wanted a program since the state was basically saying, hey, you need to get out of that business. We wanted to go to the experts. And so we turned to uh, KIPCOR and we designed a program which tries to uh, help people through all stages of their issues in domestic relations cases with particular emphasis on resolving child custody disputes and ongoing conflict mm -hmm. in uh, uh, parenting agreements because the children are the real victims uh, right. in that kind of a situation. And if we can minimize that, then we're serving uh, children. And we set it up to be on a sliding scale, which has required financial sacrifices on the part of KIPCOR. It certainly has. But we try to make it affordable for everybody so that people who have the financial means to participate in that uh, have reasonable fees and people who have lower incomes still have the services available to them because it's an important program that is to deal with uh, high conflict parents as well as identifying parents at early stages so that they can be made aware of uh, the mm -hmm. dangers to children of uh, being in conflict. And I think you just gave a compelling reason why it, it may be um, maybe you are wondering, you know, conflict resolution, you know, maybe that's not 
um, the, the, the thing that kind of motivates you. But when you said, when you talked about children and the needs of children and the ways that KIPP Corps is able to support families, um, I hope that that would compel some of you to consider giving because some of the resources that we use, we use to help parents go through this process. Some of the money that we receive in grants, we actually give right back to our families in the ways of easing their financial burden to procure services like ours. So thank you so much for bringing that up and families are important. And um, the, the, the mental and health and well-being of families is important. And if we can help support that in any way, we want to do that at KIPP Court. It's a real service to the court system and to the families that we have to deal with because we deal with a lot of very difficult situations and KIPP Court helps us find a way to deal constructively with those. I mean, it's easy to just make a decision. Okay, the kids get to live here and uh, issue orders, but getting parents to understand how their relationship impacts children mm -hmm. uh, is something the courts can do by themselves. It requires people who are experienced in going beyond the court here. Yeah, yeah, so thank you. And Dan um, has worked with Judge Walker for um, many years um, in, in partnership, and so in that, um, any other comments we want to make about the program um, as we start to wind down? I would just emphasize that we also have um, some critical educational components to the program. Mm -hmm. It's not just providing services, that's important, but we also, many of the parents go through our divorce impact education class, which is just a one-time class, um, but we also have the HOPE program, which mm -hmm. Judge Walker mm -hmm. also helped create, mm -hmm. uh, where it's much more intensive. It's like our divorce class on steroids, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, it's much more time commitment. They do a lot of practicing um, outside of the classes, um, and they really put the tools to use in their everyday lives uh, as part of that educational program. I think um, one of the things that um, I remember you sharing, Dan, is we're now in an era where we're not able to do in-person engagement like we had been. Mm -hmm. However, what we've noticed is the people who are participating in um, Divorce Impact and the HOPE course are leaning in more and probably benefiting in some ways um, due to the ways that virtual engagement permits them to be in their own homes mm -hmm. because they're dealing with a lot of you know, anxiety about separating and divorcing, and they're probably also dealing with some stress. And so coming to be with people sometimes may produce even more anxiety and stress than being in one's own home and then having to respond to a lot of concerns and questions around what they're doing and how they're doing it in terms of the separation and divorce process. So what I've been hearing recently is that a lot of people are benefiting from just being able to participate from places that feel comfortable for them. Yeah, that is uh, just for the class, they used to come here in this room and they'd be sitting next to each other. And there's an advantage of having uh, people here in person for education. Uh -huh. Uh, I was skeptical of using Zoom for that, but it's really turned out to be pretty neat for the reasons you mentioned. For whatever reason, people do seem more engaged. Uh, they're in the comfort of their own home. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times, uh, parents attend uh, classes with their co-parent mm -hmm. <laughs> in the same class. Uh, and due to the conflict between them, that can get uneasy. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot more, um, it's, it's a lot easier to deal with when it's on a Zoom screen rather than having that co-parent sitting right next to you or something. So yeah. um, I've been surprised by how well Zoom has worked for these educational pieces. Well, that is excellent. So with that, I'm just going to show people one more thing. I think we should, I think we got to take them out on the deck because oh. it's a gorgeous fall day. And what you have to know about KIPP Corps is we work hard, play hard here. So there are times when we like to take our students and our, tra and our trainings and classes out on the deck 
and we get the opportunity to enjoy this lovely back yard area and we sit sometimes at the picnic table we might eat some meals here but it's just a lovely lovely space and so at Kipcor, we just we're so fortunate to have such a lovely area to have people come um, who may be otherwise in situations that aren't so lovely and happy but as much as we can provide space for them to um, enjoy and take their minds off of some of the things that might confound them that's what we aim to do and so with that folks this is the last of my uh this is the last of my live um dan oh i did i did show that oh you do oh oh i'm so sorry what was i thinking but it was me uh, I'm happy to sign this for people if they want to make a donation, and we'll give this to that them. That is a great by idea. The, uh, by the artist. That is a great idea. This is for auction, folks. Um, it's not even a silent one. It's a very loud <laughs> auction. So if you want to give, if you want to give right now, first person that contacts me will get this actual flip chart paper with the Rembrandt-like rendering of a conflict uh, intensity map um, signed by Dan Wasink. So um, don't hesitate because someone is gonna snap this up. So anyway, with that folks, I am gonna sign off. Please consider your donation um, to KIPCOR. Um, we are gonna be doing this for the rest of the day please go to our website at www.kipcore.org to donate. If you click on the Peace Lecture poster with Sarah Smarsh's picture, scroll down where it says donate now and you would be able to donate electronically. If you do not prefer to do that, you're welcome to call us and we will be here till 5 p.m. Otherwise, you are welcome to email us and all of that information is on our website, please consider your gift today. And please do not, you will not want to miss Sarah Smarsh as our peace lecturer this evening at 7 p.m. Please go on our website to register and we will send you a link to the webinar. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for being with us.